Hey guys, this is Neil with Callus Machine Works. What are these parts sitting here on the table? Yep, you guessed it. This is the Raging Droner. This is what one looks like. Mm-hmm. Are you jealous? I've got my Raging Droner in my hands right now. Five inches of awesome right here. Now, I want to point out that this video is not a full electronics install. This is just the frame assembly itself, okay? Now, there are two types of variants with this. There's the regular, we'll call it the standard spec five inch bill that you've got here. Then we also have a hybrid. And basically the difference, well, the difference between the hybrid and this guy is that there's six inch arms in the back and the six inch arms are a millimeter thicker because of that, you have to use a thinner spacer right here. Okay, so you've got longer, thicker arms and a thinner spacer. That's the only difference. Otherwise, they're identical. So let's go ahead and go through the parts. Um, we've got a front brace. This is the bottom plate. These are these cage side plates here. You'll notice one of them has a press nut pressed into it. Okay, this is a rear, uh, we'll call it a rear bulkhead. This is a 3D printed part. This is a couple of arm spacers. We've got the arms here. Now I want to point out these are the exact same arms used in our America 5 inch. Identical. Okay, so if you have the hybrid, you're going to have two of these. And then these two are going to be 6 inch, so they're going to be longer. These are the cage braces. So this is the front cage brace. This is the rear cage brace. Then we've got a Velcro strap and a bag of fasteners. So that's that. So let's begin. Shazam. All right, so the first step, what we're gonna do is take this TPU part. We're gonna take the rear cage brace open up the fastener bag, get out some fasteners. There are half inch uh, sheet metal screws. These are number four size sheet metal screws, self-tapping screws. These are antenna tubes. All right, so what we wanna do is start screwing this guy in. And these point to the back towards the direction the antennas come out. Now, what you want to pay attention to is how much torque you're putting on this screw. All right, you're running a self-tapping screw into a soft material. So you don't want to over-torque it. You're just going to strip the plastic. What you want to do is run it down until it's snug and then stop. Okay, get a little bit of resistance and then stop. There you go, like that. Now you can go ahead and install the antenna tubes. Now, of course, if you're using Crossfire or something of that nature, you're not gonna wanna use these. These are for, you know, let's say for instance, like a uh, FreeSky RXSR or an XM Plus, something of that nature. But if you intend to use these, you just run them in. Push them in all the way till they stop. And you have the option to cut these down. If you look at this build here, right? So I've cut them down. They don't need to be this long. We just put plenty of length in here in the event that you wanted to use it all, but you don't really have to. And it's probably better if you don't, if you don't need it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut these down. So we'll cut these down to match this. Something about right there looks good. All right. All 
There we go. Look at that. That's beautiful. On to the next step. Go ahead and finish off this sub-assembly. What I do is look in the fastener bag for this little sleeve. This is an aluminum sleeve. It is a M3 hole. We've got four and a half millimeter diameter and it's 19 millimeters long. And what you want to do is just press this into the bore here, like so. You may have to get something to press it in there. I'm going to do it on the edge of the table here. All right, so off camera, I took this to the edge of my table and just pressed that sleeve in there. Now, another thing, get some little zip ties and then you can run them around the little bosses that come out of this part. And this is gonna help to hold in the antenna so they don't come flying out in a crash or get ripped out. that and we will chop that one off this all right There you go. That's what the finished assembly looks like. In this step, what we're gonna do is grab the bottom plate, the sub-assembly we just finished, the two rear arm spacers, two arms. Now, if you have the hybrid, keep in mind you're gonna use the longer arms. And then we've got M3 by 18 millimeter screws here. Just for reference, this is what the assembly looks like in the rear when it's together. So let's go ahead and put it together. So, if you look at this, the two arms in the front are spaced out wider, right? So this is the rear here. So flip this over. Arm goes like this. These all stack together. this, put another screw in, All right, now you probably have noticed that instead of this screw just sliding in, there is a little bit of resistance, and so I'm having to screw it in. What we've done is designed these holes so that they are sized correctly for the screw, so it prevents a whole lot of slop here at this interface. All right, so let's go ahead and finish off the other side.
There we go. Let me turn my phone off. People keep messaging me and messing up my video. Thank you, people, for messaging and making little dinging sounds. <laughs> so this is what it looks like with the ass end assembled. All right, make sure that you get the arms on top of these spacers. In this next step, we're going to install the front arms. This is going to be a partial installation. I'll explain in a minute. So we've got the subassembly we just finished. We've got the two front arms. And then these are M3 by 10 millimeter screws. Here we go. <clears throat> so what you want to do is line up this slot with the interior hole. Take your screw, put it in here. Run it in until it's snug. You don't really have to tighten the heck out of it. And then line up this hole with the bottom hole. Okay, make sure it's lined up. I'm gonna do this to the other, other arm. Oops. Perfect. Okay. Guys, right, so in this section, what we're going to do is take the front brace, the front cage brace, and the cage side plates. We're going to join these all together. Now, they're not joined by fasteners. They just go together like this. Okay. I want you to be aware that in this portion of the build, you may have to use a file. Right. And the locations that you may have to file are here, these two surfaces here, and here. The way this thing works is you take and you press these two parts together. So you join them like this, you use some pressure, and you snap these together. Now, in that process, if you're trying to push these together and they're just not going, you're going to have to remove a little material. Right? It should take no more than, I mean, the tiniest bit of material. Literally remove just a little bit, you know, so you get a little bit of dust, and that's it. And then try to put them together again, and do that process until what you want is you want these things to snap together with a little bit of pressure. You don't want to have to take, if you put too much pressure on these things, um, it could be possible that you're going to crack them. All right, so let me show you what it should look like. Just like that. Okay. Take this one. Line it up. Put it on the table. And just run them into place. Just like that. Perfect. Okay. Now, there's manufacturing variances, okay? Whenever I design something in CAD, there is a line, there is a path that the bit follows. But it never works that way. That's just the nature of machining. There's actually a range that we specify that the bit has to stay within, an acceptable range. All right, so sometimes, depending on the speed of the bit, how dull the bit is, and a number of other variables, it could determine which side of the line that bit is cutting on. So that means that this dimension here is going to vary from batch to batch, part to part. That's just the nature of machining. It doesn't change from Catalyst Machine Works to other manufacturers around the world. We all deal with that. That's just the way that it goes. So what I'm getting at is if you go and you try to put this in here, and it's a little bit looser than you see in my video, or it's a little bit tighter than you see in my video, that's the way it is. <laughs> There's nothing I can do to control that. So you're just going to have to account for that with one of these if it's too tight. All right, so let's try this one. There we 
go. Perfect. There you have it. There's a couple things I forgot to mention in that last bit is, and this is important, is on this part, part of this cage assembly, is which side this little captive nut is sitting on. I even screwed it up when I put these things together. I had to, off camera, I had to re-pull these out and do it again, is make sure that your captive nut is on this side, that it's on the outside. Okay, you don't want it on the inside. So there's that. And then the next thing, since we're on the subject of files, is you've got to make sure to go ahead and file these corners here, put a nice rounded edge on this corner and this corner, and then on the same side, or on the uh, opposite side rather, this corner and this corner. And you do that for the Velcro strap. So the Velcro strap is going to be running through here, and you don't want this material running up against this sharp corner. So I suggest, I highly suggest to go ahead and round this off. In this step, we're going to join the two sub-assemblies together, the, uh, the main structure and then the cage and front brace. So how this works is you basically just slide this together like this. Okay, this is a M3 by 27 millimeter screw and an aluminum washer. You run it through this hole and then it is going to mate up to the captive nut. Now you're going to notice that what's going to happen when you start to tighten this down is it's going to take these two plates and they're going to slightly bend inward. You want to put just a little bit of bend in there, get this screw snug, and you're done. Okay, you don't need to go and crank the hell out of it and bend these plates in like this. Just get it to where the plates just start to bend in just a little bit. Okay. Now the next part, you want to take a couple M3 by 12 millimeter screws and run them in these holes here. Okay, and then for this last part, the way that this is designed is these are also M3 by 12 millimeter screws. They run up through here, run up through the brace. And then through the arm, they run into the motor. So there's two of these screws per motor that run through this brace. So just so we can just so I can give you a visual of what this is going to look like, I'm going to go grab a, grab a couple motors. Alright, I just found a couple random motors uh, I had in my box, just a couple spares. These are some T-motor, different types, but for the purposes of this, uh, this little demonstration, it'll work just fine. I'm going to take and run the screw into the motor. This and you guys that are familiar with America or own America, this is a uh, this is the same design here. The way this works, so this is nothing new to you.
All right. And that's how that works. So there we have it. In this step, I'm going to install these two standoffs. These are knurled aluminum standoffs. They go in these two spots. You're going to use four of the M3 by 8 millimeter screws that you've got in the kit. So I'll go ahead and install the first one. All right, for the rear standoff, what you want to do is take this portion here and just bend it back. This is TPU, so you're not going to break it. Just bend this like this, open up these, or expose these holes, and then you can press the standoff through like this. Just move that back down, position it, get the holes lined up, and then you can put the screws through. Now one thing I want to mention at this point is when it comes time to remove this standoff for whatever reason, there's a number of ways to get it out. Now what you'll find is that if you just take and you take this screw out and you try and remove this one, all it does is just spin the standoff, right? There's nothing holding this standoff. So there's a number of ways to do, well there's a couple ways to do this rather. One way that I use, and one way that is absolutely required if you've got this scenario going on, like this. Here's another one of our prototypes where you have a 3D mount in this area. Is you can take and Unscrew one side just a little bit, then go in the other on the other side, unscrew it just a little bit, and keep going back and forth like this. Okay, and that will release the screws from the standoff. Another way to do it, and you can only do it this way if you don't have one of those GoPro mounts sitting on here blocking this area, is to take a wrench, where's my wrench? Here we go. Okay, and you can grab the TPU. You don't want to grab here because you're going to you're going to mar up the surface, but you can grab the TPU and then you can hold this hold the standoff and take these screws out. So that's the two ways to remove that rear standoff. All right, we're getting close to being complete here. Um, the things I the last things I wanted to point out are all the extra screws that you're going to have left in your fastener bag. There's a number of M3 by 8 millimeter screws. What those are for are the other locations in the front for mounting the motor and then in the rear for mounting the motors. So this is 5 millimeter carbon so you want to have a uh, M3 by 8 millimeter screw to run through here. So we've provided aluminum screws for doing that. Um, another thing I can suggest is it's highly advisable, well not highly advisable, but I think it's a good idea 
um, especially if you're going to be running a GoPro um, to run a rear brace. All right, or if you are one of these racers who's just a madman or a mad woman, and you haul ass and you're constantly crashing and you're very aggressive, um, you want to run a rear brace here. This uses the same rear brace as the America 5 inch, the original stretch America runs the same rear brace. So that's an optional accessory and uh, you can look that up. You might want to get a rear brace. Okay, so then also in your kit you've got some uh, nylon fasteners. What those are for is the stack and I'm going to show you how they're used on an example build. This is our prototype again, one of them. And what we've got here is an M3 by 12 millimeter nylon screw that runs up through the stack. These are spacers. These spacers, these little black spacers, there's eight of them. There's two per corner. And these separate the 4-in-1 ESC from the bottom plate. Then you've got the standoff, aluminum, I'm sorry, uh, nylon standoff. Then you've got the nuts. Pretty basic stuff. Most of you probably already know that. So that's what those are for. Uh, the next thing is in your kit, you're going to have some um, M2 by 4 millimeter screws and washers. Those are for the camera. All right. Then you've got these little guys. These are sheet metal screws. They're number two. And I think they're 7 sixteenths. Set sixteenths? <laughs> That's hard to say. 16th, 7 sixteenths inch long. All right, these run through these little holes here. And they are designed to join the canopies. So if you decided to purchase one of these optional canopies, that screw holds the front end. Then obviously these two holes here run over these standoffs. Okay, and that's how that is positioned into place. So if you're going to install this, obviously you would have gone ahead and run the standoffs into here, and then you put this down, and then you're going to put the, uh, oops, hit my light. Then you're going to put these screws in. So that's how that works. One thing I forgot to mention about this canopy is this here, this opening in this little spot, you can put the receiver if you want. And then you can run the wires down through this portion here. All right, so this will fit like an RXSR, uh, Crossfire, XM Plus. I don't know if it'll fit a Spectrum. Those are massive. <laughs> but, but that's what that's for. Or you can just do it like this, where you've got the receiver sitting on top of the stack. Here's another build, and this is a micro build where we've got the receiver just sitting on top. So however you want to go about it, all right, so that's how that works. And then this portion here, uh, this bulkhead accepts an SMA, um, FPV SMA, like this. You can see it here. All right, so if you're a racer, a lot of racers use these because you can take and change the polarization quickly. This is a little Axi antenna. Now, you don't have to run that type. We are going to be selling very soon. Well, by the time this video releases, actually. So we are selling a standard type Axi, we'll call it an adapter. I don't know what you'd call it, a mount standard type axi mount and the way that this works let me grab an axi it's actually similar to this All right, this is one of our prototypes but we've changed this and I'll show you how this works alright so I went in my secret nerd box and I grabbed a axi if you're a racer you're probably going to want to use one of these MMCX that way you can change polarization, but the way this thing runs in, you just put it in like this. Now let's grab a zip tie. 
Okay, and the zip tie goes around here. There's a little channel that the zip tie goes around. Like that. And we'll clip this off. Right. That's how that works. Now, this is an optional accessory. If you want to get this, you got to buy it separate. And because of the way this thing is designed, where the it's not a continuous cylinder, um, you can use different size axie type antennas in here. I think Fox Ears got some. I've never used them personally, but anyways, those are a pretty cool deal. Now we've got some other cool accessories I wanted to point out. That's the camera mounts, right? So we've got, obviously you saw when I displayed this earlier, this is a full-size GoPro mount that you can use on this. There are different uh, little, we call them angle bars that you can put in here to get this uh, proper angle that you want. And this assembly is designed to work with this type canopy. This is a different type of canopy that is, you, that is designed to be used specifically with these cameras, or I'm sorry, these camera mounts. Okay, you really, I mean, I guess you could use this assembly without this canopy, but it's not gonna work as well at this interface. So if you're gonna use a camera mount, I suggest to get this canopy and pick the color you want. Now, check this out, okay? We subcontract all of our printing out to a company called Smotty 3D. Right, this is my brother's company actually and he's got well over 20 printers. Um, it is a fantastic system that he has created and as you can see the prints that he produces for us are unbelievable. This is actually, these are a couple new ones um, using a new process. You guys have probably seen this out there in FPV land. This is multicolor and Look at these things, they're, they're magnificent. So we've only got, or well, he only has one of these printers that can do this right now. So when we go to release these, which is gonna be soon, you know, you better order quick because um, it's gonna take a while. <laughs> you gotta get in the queue if you want some of these. And they're gonna be a little bit more expensive, obviously, uh, because the amount of work and time that goes into these, it's mostly time-based, but and there's a lot more material. Um, when these things print, there's something called a waste tower. Um, you can look that up online, but because of the waste tower, there's a lot more volume. There's actually about twice the amount of volume that uh, there is in a multicolor compared to just a single color print. So anyways, that's that. Those will be available soon. And obviously we've got the single colors uh, for these mounts available on the website now. That's all I can think of right now for the Raging Droner 5-inch. Um, at some point in the future, we're going to do a 4-inch version of this, and we will also do a 6-inch version of this. That'll be coming as time permits sometime in the future. All right, that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at support at catalystmachineworks.com or info at catalystmachineworks.com.